Evil Athol one here, guys, and today we got one hell of a collab. Because clearly someone went up and asked Gumi, so, um, what collab are we taking? And Gumi just said, yes. And that meant, basically, all the collabs. There you go. But, to be fair, Gumi have had a, quite a bit of a problem trying to get some of these collabs back for us. There's never been any room. That was kind of like one of the things they said last year, that they just didn't have any room to add any of these collabs in. They said, what is it, two years now? Rico? Yes, a year and a half or something. It's really a long time now since Just Cause 4 has been there. Even Xenogears is even longer. Oh, damn. Even just thinking back, there's Ex Machina. That's where I was in Germany. Damn. It is a long time <laughs> when you start to think about when you last seen some of these uh, collabs. But we're getting the, basically the full-on adventure collab coming in here. And that is honestly the best way they could have fixed it. There was no other way. Let's just put the whole collapse together, get this over with, get Rico into a 7-star form, give me a Super Team Art, let's just get it done. So we can better make what we want into the future for Five Fantasy Brave Exeus. That's what I'm guessing anyway. Um, we will talk about some of the enhancements, of course. Um, but overall, this is actually a pretty damn good step up. When you're looking at it, you're guaranteed three rainbows, but not only that, when you collect five of these particular tickets you're seeing, then you can pick any of these collab units you want. And it's only the collab units uh, on these that's going to be popping up. So there's a freakishly good chance you're going to get a quite a few units that you have been quite desirable. Or even some older units you've been very close getting their Super TMRs. This can be a great opportunity to get the, some of them. There are some really great Super TMRs still here. I'll make another video talking about some of those Super TMRs I would recommend you to aim for. There are some good ones, and there's some that sadly has been a bit outdated. We'll talk about that, of course. But overall, it's a great step up. But at the same time, it's also a step up you can skip out on uh, out if you have no interest in these particular units. But if there are some Super TMRs, this can actually be a pretty damn good collab to going for. So let's take a little talk about the enhancements that has come to some of these units. Now, we are going to get some enhancements for these units, and you might be saying, wait, what about the other ones? Well, actually, there is eight lagging getting any enhancements, and this can also maybe be one of the reasons why you might want to wait out on... till we know if everyone is going to get an enhancement, or, or it's just these four we are getting. I am hoping the eight others that is lagging here are getting enhancements as well, and I also hope we're going to get some events soon that can help us getting some more gill and maybe a few more ability crystals. Mostly the pure crystals. They are not something you're that easily farmed. Because um, it is quite a bit of number of units that's going to be enhanced. And I am sadly the kind of guy who likes to enhance almost every single one of them. Whew. But we'll take a look at these few informations we got here. Only three of the units we're we going to be able to talk about. That's Tubi and Gens on Ellie. But I also want to talk about Arena, what I think think is a possibility for her when it comes to her enhancements because honestly her I'm looking very much forward to so let's take a look at the first one 2B now 2B originally has always been a good chainer and back in the day she did great damage she was quite powerful for a good wild but of course she's always had that bit of an issue with her chaining family is a little iffy it's the gravitational cannon family and she has a single move that chains with the SR family but she was also most of the time used as kind of like a finisher for the limbers with breaks. Kind of like, you played her a little round with that. She's still a decent breaker to this day. Still decent. But times has changed since we got Riku and now Vanille coming with 80% break. So her enhancements should f reflect around that to amplify her breaking capabilities and of course giving her some of the powers. And that's kind of like what we're seeing happening here. So one of her uh, moves, Avoid becomes an attack and a magic break uh, to one enemy for two turns. An on-demand 70% break is always nice. Boost damage times. Physical attacks can be evaded up to three times. And some damage uh, boosts amount of counter attacks. Fine. So the problem is we can't really talk about what the potential damage they have. We have to wait until we can see everything. But we can at least look at the break numbers. And the Supreme Support Weapon, that was generally the one you start out breaking with, goes up to an 80%. Very important, but she, her buff to attack and defense can now uh, not be dispelled as well, so that's great stuff. And there are also some damage modifications for some other abilities. Again, we don't know what they are going to be. We'll see eventually down the line. So already, breaks, great, looking, promising. 
One of the other abilities, Ohura Sword, uh, was also one of the abilities you unlock you could also break with. That will also boost breaks up to 75%. So we can already see now there are three abilities that is hitting from 70 up to 80%. Great stuff. And again, extra speed and Star Dance will get some effect as well. We're getting some nice status boosting to Defense Spear by 30%, HP by 30%. We also get Paralyzed, Confusion, and Stone Resistance. Great stuff. Uh, and some Escape Death as well, so Fatal. Um, resistance is always great. There's also going to be a change to her limit burst. So we're going to boost her limit burst damage, but we're also going to get a change of the effect. So that most likely means it's going to be a higher break number. I'm expecting 80%, and we'll see how much damage we are talking about. So I'm also looking forward to that. There was also increase on attack and defense up there, and boost MP restoration amount to 10%. Great stuff. And finally, upgrade we are going to get here is also boost and increase to. Uh, tag and spirit MP by to 70%. Another 30% HP, good. So it becomes slightly more tangier. Great. Boost damage increase, equipment increase, all this kind of stuff. Overall, it looks very promising what is going to be happening. But I will say, don't get too overly hyped. When we looked at the previous couple of enhancements, Gumi has been holding very much back on when it comes to damage dealers enhancements. And it's kind of like... The problem here is, generally, whenever we get a new unit, especially damage dealers, their damage is just escalating so high up. Our damage dealers is so far ahead. We don't need damage dealers that are that powerful at the moment, but you can kind of like say that's a luxury problem here in Global Slide. Newer units are just far more powerful physical and magical damage-wise. And so they haven't really match the enhancements to those kind of units so most of the time they're only half as powerful as they are but they, they have more than enough power to handle any content you want so i would say when it comes to damage you enhance those that will benefit you the most especially as breakers um it sounds definitely if you're lacking a breaker uh, if you don't have something like vanilla or riku those 80 percent breaks to be could maybe be a possibility we'll see when we get the numbers um she sounds like to be becoming a pretty decent main breaker and then, of course, Adam Jensen is getting some enhancements, finally! I'm actually looking a lot more forward to Victor, because I really like the character back in the day. He was actually a pretty damn cool 100% provoker with very powerful finishing capabilities, but... Damn, he needs some enhancements. Also, Adam Jensen needs that as well. He's always been a very weird unit from the day he was released. He was not really the big selling point. I like the Super TMR. It's still a good Super TMR to this day. Um, I'm trying to remember if there was anything special about it. He had a tornado move. And that was pretty much it. That was what he could chain with. So there are some neat changes that are coming along the way here. He didn't have any dual cast functions. And the cool thing is all those kind of things are being adjusted here. Um, I don't want to go too much in depth. But the few things that stands out for me with this particular guy is this one. Awaken 2. He's going to be able to cast evasion to the entire team. whoop de do. But it is a good thing because it gives two evasion for physical attacks. Oh, now that could be very beneficial. That means basically you can take a magic cover and then you don't need to worry about any physical attacks coming to hurt your team AoE-wise. That could be a big save. A big save indeed. Um, there are also going to be some chaining changes. He's going to go up to a 10 hit for one of his move out, the Tesla move. So that's most likely going to be the SR family. He's going to be focusing around lightning and fire elemental. Going to be his two elementals. And they are going to be decreased up to a 100%. Good stuff. And some damage mode of fire comes in. Again, 10 hit changes. Uh, let's see here. Also, that was one of the fire moves that he can uh, also add to himself for... Uh, five turns. Lightning element also for five turns is coming along the way. And then the tornado move gets a significant change. Originally, his tornado move was a fire elemental move, but the fire elemental is going to be removed. So basically, because he can add lightning and fire now to himself, you can then make this element of chain with it, which is a nice change. But the tornado also gets a change in its frames from tornado to the AR family. Much more usable, and it also seems to come in with quite a bit of power. So uh, that looks also very promising. Besides that, there's going to be some uh, power increases, his limit burst. I'm hoping his limit burst is getting a significant boost um, because it's a one-hit move. And I would like to see him become some sort of a dedicated finisher since he both have fire and lighting. Would be nice because we are seeing some changes down below here where his limit burst is going to be changed and there's a significant boost in limit burst damage to 200%. But once again, we'll see how much Gumi will willingly give to this guy because most of the time Gumi's kind of like holding back on it with the 200%. After that there's nothing bigger 
unique about it. But I do like the changes he's getting, and he's also getting some dual cast functionality, by the way, down here. That's going to help him a lot, so you can still do some change and cast uh, evasion. So, there's still that possibility. I'm, I'm a little curious. I'm looking forward to see what kind of damage this guy can actually pull off. And then, of course, of Ellie is going to be the final unit we have information about. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about Arena. Now, normally, when we talk about damage dealers, I'm not any more excited about them. Because Kumi has been holding their power so much back. But Ellie, I am getting a bit excited for. Because the change that they're giving to her is very similar to what Cersei got. If you don't know, Cersei is a very interesting mage in that she can add elements to herself and then her finishing move is registered as kind of like a physical attack where she can utilize the elements but it scales on the magic side, which is great. It, it really allowed the unit to use all of elements without limited to one. You see many times mages has maybe two or three elements they specialize in, and even worst cases, you might see a... Uh, a mage that has four different elements, but there's only one element that is good to focus on. Because the main power elemental is locked to one element. Or you will see some mages that has a magic move that is non-elemental. So what the... Those irritates me the most. But here, it doesn't matter because you can add the element. And I have a sneaky suspicion that is going to be the change to a limit burst. Is going to be the adjustment. I can actually remember her limit burst. Is that a one-hit move or... Yeah, her limit burst was actually a one-hit move, so uh, yeah, makes a lot of sense that she would become some sort of a mage finisher. Mm, okay, I'm very curious now. So, other changes she's getting is basically all her elemental moves are not going to be chainable. Great, that's a big upgrade compared to the JP side, because it was one element I recall was the wind one, was the only thing she could use as a chaining move. That's going to be to change. They're going to up it to eight hits. That should be the awakening uh, chaos wave from the family. So great stuff. And so generally, it's just more power and some very important change of effects to her limit burst down here. So it looks quite promising. Uh, also, she's a unit who's getting a significant boost of elemental resistance naturally. So for certain fights, she can be much more easy to gear to others. Sorry. But the question, of course, is how much power she's getting. Um, we don't know yet. We'll see. And she's also one of those mages that has a five times cast in her kit. But I don't think it's going to be the main source of her power, maybe. Not if they're playing around with it. Because the biggest issue there is, uh, there's not many other mages that has five times cast. It is a very small selection. Um, but we'll see. I am, I am a little excited about Ellie right now. I like these change. I like these kind of sorcerers. I really wish there was more of them because they are so rare in between, but uh, I like what I'm seeing here with Ellie thus far, and hopefully her power is going to be good. I'm not ever expecting Earth Shattering, but hopefully her finishing capabilities are going to be good enough, so she's ranking decently high. And I was like, when it comes to mages, there is plenty of room. Um, come on, uh, Gumi, give her some love. I will not my, uh, have, be sad about that Ellie maybe hits a round top three, but most likely she's not going to be doing that. She's mostly going to be hit in the middle of it. That's what I'm expecting. But we'll see other kind of surprises come along the way. And the final unit I just want to talk about is Rena. Now, we don't have any information about her, but Rena could be a big surprise when it comes uh, to these particular units. Gumi have been, had quite a bit of a love for these support units, and this is where it could be very interesting. And Rena could be an incredible, unique support unit compared to others, because Rena has almost everything you want from a healer. Yeah, she has great healing numbers. She has AoE Revive, she has Signatory Revive, she has AoE Auto Revive, uh, she can cure a lot of status effects AoE-wise, but she's still lacking a few other things, but they can be easily added in. And when we're talking about support capabilities, well, her damage and magical damage mitigation are just too low, her buffing is too low, and she's maybe lacking some status immunity, but again, things that are easily added in if they want to. So right now, Rena is kind of like in this position. The Gumi could push her over to become a much better healer to match the others that we have, or they could push her over to support and match some of the best supporters we have at the moment. So I'm excited about her. I'm hoping, personally, she's going to push her a bit over to the healer side, which is still going to be a decent support unit. So let's try to look at her first as a support. What could it do there to make some changes? Well, as a supporter, a lot of them has some sort of a damage mitigation. Well, she has magical. Uh, right here with 20% for 5 turns to the entire team. And there's also a normal damage mitigation with 20% for 3 turns. This could be easily be enhanced up to 30% for both of them for uh, 
five turns. And this up here could easily be increased, so it gives spirit and defense for five turns. That could maybe be a 140%, maybe. That I could see definitely some changes with. There's also other possibility of enhancements, or these up here to a single target. That could become AoE to attack and magic for five turns. Or defense of spirit, uh, with 150%, for five turns. The numbers are still good, they just need to change them into AoE, and they can maybe even make them undispellable. They could do stuff like that. And then of course status immunity, that is something she lacks. She can cure up here with stub included. That could give status resistance and stop immunity. Would already put her in a very good spot if they do give her something like that. I don't think they will give her charm, but it would be a bonus if they do give her charm in there as well. Could be pretty cool. And that's pretty much it that just generally he needs. Higher numbers down here. And then of course change to a limit burst with higher numbers. Now one of the downsides I've always had with her changing to a 7 star is that her limit burst became a lot more expensive. So I'm hoping this thing's going to get a few other things. Like it gets a 200% uh, buffing for maybe 4 turns. And cannot be dispelled of course. But also can cure and give break resistance to the entire team. The HP and MP recovery is still fine. There's no reason to increase that. That's still fine for it what it is. But... I would like to see a little more potent, um, potentness when it comes to it. Now, that's very simple, and then she's going to be able to match a lot of other supports. She didn't. She's still lacking something like elemental resistance or even even higher damage mitigation, but she will still be able to be fine matching them. Secondly, so if we're looking at her as a healer, what is it she's lacking? Because she has a lot of it already. She has Korja heals in here to fair light. She has AOE revive, single target AOE revive, and even auto revive down here. Now there needs to be a little adjustment to her dual cast because you cannot dual cast this particular move down here. I'm hoping that could be adjusted with some enhancements so we can really utilize her entire kit. Even the silence up here I would like to see because she's one of those few units that can actually uh, uh, silence uh, magic on the enemy. Really cool stuff. Not many units can do that. So what is she's lacking? As a healer and single target or revive would be very nice and that could be easily be added to the fairy healing. It already heals 100% HP to one ally. Why not make it uh, to an auto revive as well for three turns? Could easily be done. Same thing, we're talking about the cure status elements. We are seeing a lot of healers have some sort of status immunity. Could easily be added here as well. The healing is already more than enough potent you can play around with. Uh, break resistance, again, as we mentioned before, that could be adjusted to her limit burst with higher buff capabilities. And they could maybe potent up her healing then if they wanted to push her up into that direction. But as you can see, as a healer, she's not too far away to matching others. She has the right numbers, it's just some small adjustments, better stats, and there she is. Simple stuff. So I'm hoping she is going to be right there, is slightly better healer with some great support capabilities. Because in theory then, if she's on that territory, you could make her very slot efficient. That she becomes your main healer and your main supporter at the same time. If they are going to do that, you might want to see some abilities that can both buff and heal at the same time, maybe. But again, when you can dual cast around, that can open up some possibilities. But Rena definitely has a lot of potential becoming a great uh, support unit. Hopefully Gumi does not <laughs> screw us over that one. But again, keep in mind guys, there are still eight other units that is not mentioned they are getting any enhancements just yet. Um, I'm expecting we might hear something like that next week. Uh, we'll see, or... I'm hoping they're not going to be trying to draw it out because that's kind of one of the biggest issues has been thus far is the, the slowness of latent abilities and awakening abilities. It's just taking way too slow. So if you're still unsure, if you want to pull on it, just try to wait until the, next week or we get some confirm from Gumi that yes, the other units, eight others, will get enhancements as well uh, coming very soon. I'm really hoping it's going to be coming already next week because... It, it's it's holding a bit back on the banner, especially with the older units. And I'm just looking at the mostly for the Super Team Mars then. I would like to see some of these units getting a chance to be utilized once again. Especially from Xeno Gears and uh, Nier are some of the units I would love to play around with. And Star Ocean, especially Arena. Oof. But yeah, that's generally my take on it. And I would like to hear what do you guys think. Are you kind of like waiting a little bit until you get noticed if anyone else is going to get some enhancements? Or are there some Super Team Mars you're really interested in for this particular unit? And we will talk about that in a previous video. So thank you so much for watching. And yeah, guys, please like and subscribe for the channel. So we can laugh together in... 
the darkness. Ha, 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 ha.